huge thanks for everybody joining. I already appreciate the mustache comments in chat. Uh, with that said, um, today's topic is about unveiling cybercrime markets. I know, you know, always too often do you hear the, oh, the hackers are in this for business, but you never get to see how they're actually doing it. So that's more or less today's whole goal. With that said, just as some brief notes, you know, the session is recorded. So if you got to step out, we'll send you a copy. If somebody else wants one of those, make sure you send them a copy of the URL to be able to register to get the recording. Chat is super important with the way that we do this. A lot of this is back and forth while I'm talking, Kevin's answering questions, vice versa. Um, and most importantly, right, troll the presenters, right? There, there's nothing more fun than taking advantage of us messing up uh, on the fly here. So, uh, without further ado, uh, I'm Kyle Hanslow, the CEO of Huntress, and Kevin is the CEO of ID Agent. Uh, ironically, both longtime friends, Maryland residents. Uh, and Kevin, you want to introduce yourself or say anything about it? Yeah, no, I've got my uh, Maryland flag in the background over here, over my shoulder somewhere. You can see it, but uh, yeah, no, we've uh, it's been great over the last couple of years to really get to know you on the on the uh, the circuit. And uh, I've been a major fan of of what you guys are doing. Uh, it's actually it's it's probably one of the more interesting things I get to watch uh, on both uh, LinkedIn and Facebook, just the, the progress you guys are making and just all the great things you're doing. So uh, I'm pretty pumped up about uh, being on this with you today. Yeah, so you, you could imagine, obviously, with both of us being geeks, being technical founders, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of what we were asking was, how do we make this webcast exciting, right? Um, the first way is, let's just dive into dark web offerings. The next one is malicious marketing. It's funny, like, almost all of us think about, like, you have to do sales or you have to do your own marketing for your services, but you forget how many of these hackers or criminals have to do their own marketing to convince other criminals to use their stuff. So ID Agent is huge on being able to say, like, let's take great educational content and help you not only be able to be aware of what's going on, but educate your own clients. So there's going to be a lot of that today. We're going to dive in with real world examples of how you're targeted and end with some free resources. So I, I know almost everybody loves some goodies, but that's more or less going to be the agenda. Uh, with that said, I mean, we're diving right into the dark web offerings. And there's a lot out there. Uh, Kevin, when you and I were, were talking about this, obviously you cut your teeth in some of the de Department of Defense world. You've worked with that before. And you and I have seen more than enough stolen data, right? It's always about, uh, you know, how can I you know, compromise this data and make a buck? Mm -hmm. So I think when you and I typically think of things, right, it's not uncommon to see like the driver's license for sale for a couple bucks, right? This one was 10 bucks each here in this example. Other stuff that you and I are more than familiar with is the social security numbers, the date of birth. Uh, I mean, heck, ID Agent was founded on finding data on the dark web, right? Stolen credentials dumped. So, you know, these are pretty common for us. Do you, I mean, is, has any of this changed majorly in 2019 to 2020 for you for what we're seeing? Or is this still the, you know, kind of the standard normal people selling access to computers? A lot of it's, yeah, yeah, it's a great point. A lot of it's standard, right? You know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the data that's out there, um, you know, is, is uh, you, you've seen this kind of data for the last couple of years. But to your point, you know, when the, in the opening, that the market and how you, you know, since you go to market with this data has matured, it, it's, it's, uh, it's actually interesting. You do a case study in and of itself just to see how these, these marketplaces have matured and then, to point how how uh, these uh, individuals have to up their game and draw more attention to their you know their stolen goods and and it, in some form some markets with this data transaction fees are are highly competitive. I'll go down to three points. I'll go down to two points. Uh, so that, that that's probably the, been the most interesting thing is to see how the actual the business the economics of this marketplace this this world has evolved in the last couple of years. I don't know if you see the same thing or feel the same way. Yeah, it, it, the evolution, I think, is what we've probably done our best job of highlighting in this deck. Uh, people are already asking, by the way, these slides look great. Can I get copies? And you, you know how, how these two companies roll. Of course, we're going to give you with assets and things of this nature. So um, not only will the video be available. What was interesting, and I, Kevin, I don't know if you had seen some of the late night conversations. The two of us were brainstorming on how do we get you up to date information. So I had to go and dive back onto the dark web. And ironically, as our teams were looking at this data back and forth, I managed to stumble onto another, you know, cloud service provider for sale in this case. 
So uh, this is, you know, you, you're preparing for a webinar, you're taking feedback from the audience who's like, give us more information, tell us how people are selling access to remote desktop and what that evolution is. And then I'll be darned if we don't see like in preparation for our webinar, uh, where we had to actually contact this so-and-so internet incorporated, which is a cloud service provider in the US. So anyways, we'll dig into that a little bit further about how they target you. But I wanted to make sure like in case anybody hadn't seen how actionable monitoring the dark web can be, this is the type of stuff that you see on the daily. Talking about the evolution, I think one of the things that caught me off guard, Kevin, was the marketplaces have gotten a heck of a lot prettier, right? They used to be like crude text dumps, people talking and sharing on like IRC or Slack even, uh, maybe Discord. But I mean, look at these marketplaces. They're pretty full-fledged, like even the different exchange rates on what Bitcoin is to the Australian dollar or, you know, what the Litecoin rates are. It's, it's pretty wild. Yeah, it's elegant design. And in fact, in some of these uh, forums, you have teams of people uh, behind the scenes working on, you know, the aesthetics, the security, the promotion, um, to, to your point, the, the conversion rates, making sure they're up to, up to the day conversion rates with different, uh, you know, currencies. Uh, so yeah, th these are, these are full-fledged, uh, you know, operations and they have similar to, you know, as a, some of the viewers, right? They have sales and marketing. You know, they've got sales and marketing chops. They got, you know, infrastructure chops. They've got, you know, folks that are, are out in other forms marketing. You know, you should be going on my form, and and it's really it's a it's a very you know, doggy dog world out there in trying to drive attention to your form uh, and uh, and transact. And something like Empire Market, it's you know, last stats I think I saw were you know about a million dollars a day in transactions. Yeah, these platforms. And so you can think about that. You take that million dollars times, you know, 4%, 3%, 5% transaction fee. It's serious money. It's very serious money. So I, I think most of our audience, you know, in 2020 now, we know that you can buy stuff like, you know, malicious rats or remote access tools. Um, what's funny is to see how some of these like trust levels have come along, right? Where will they ship to? So for some people who are selling stuff like drugs, or, you know, there was a conversation yesterday I read about firearms that we won't discuss in this chat, but you know, just about anything is available on the dark web, but I always find it really interesting to see this reputation, you know, over 92 of them sold since, you know, July of 2018 and constantly being updated. Um, but, you know, it's not surprising to see these weird hackerish services being offered. Like this is another one of those, you know, Russian forums where this person is willing to take your malware that usually gets caught by antivirus and they're willing to obfuscate it. So mm -hmm. those are exciting. You know, Kevin, we, we talk about this a whole lot of services, but I think our audience really hasn't seen just how large the market has evolved. They're probably so used to this very targeted example that, you know, when I think of phishing, I think of the email that I get and maybe the fake page they land me to. I mean, you guys have once again dedicated a product to you know, user education and helping find phishing that's going on. But another one of these Russian forums here that sells like dedicated access, I found this hilarious that somebody has actually made a SaaS service out of, I'll be your person to stand up your, you know, fake phishing environments, environment rental on demand, right? And what's beautiful is you give them a, you know, a domain there, or that you want to target or a page, and they're going to come back in you know, a weekly or monthly offering to you that not only is it going to be able to steal credentials from these pro uh, proxy pages, some of them try to steal the cookies to temporarily bypass two-factor, which is just wild to see how this has evolved from the real basic services into these things that are becoming much more like, you know, building blocks, right? That for somebody that needs to get access, and I know not all these are translated here, but you see this one is specifically for phishing environment rental with all kinds of initial access and payloads and long-term access in this category of the forum. But there's all kinds of other commercial offerings as well. Um, with that said though, you and I both know, Kevin, as technical founders, no company gets off the ground without some creative marketing, right? It's all about our go-to-market strategy. It's how do we differentiate ourselves? And it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, as you said. So do you want to dive, maybe we can dive into some of this like actual marketing itself on how it evolves? Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, the slides are, yeah. So again, you look at these, these marketplaces, right? And you were mentioning earlier, you know, you've got uh, with some of these, these areas, you've got uh, vendor ratings, you know, and, and you almost had to kind of go to this type of system, you know, thank you to, uh, to Amazon and, and eBay and, and the kind of 
the, the godfathers of, uh, of uh, you, you know, vendor feedback or, or seller feedback, what have you, but um, you've had to go to these, uh, these types of uh, platforms and, and provide you know, feedback loops, you know, almost to deter or, you know, again, they're enterprises. So you want to make sure that, that uh, you're touting your reputation. You're not uh, you know, getting folks that are selling stuff that, you know, you're going to buy it and you lose your money and not get delivered. Uh, what you are, what you're due. So these have turned into very, very slick marketing, you know, marketing Amazon style platforms. Uh, and, you know, you've got the, your, your listings here, you got your ability to sort, you know, based on price, some of the forms have based on vendor feedback, based on a uh, number of successful transactions and, and other kind of elements. And so, so it's just, it's not un, unlike uh, any other, you know, e-commerce uh, style platform. They, they figured out how to do this and, and do it very well. You know, it's funny, someone in our chat, you know, I'm going to put my pirate hat on here real quick uh, to really dive into some of this. Someone in the chat said, don't forget about Silk Road, right? That was one of the first places that you could, I mean, you see here even on popularity, drugs and chemicals is by far the most popular thing on this marketplace. Uh, but what's wild about the whole situation is a lot of those like actual forums dedicated towards drugs even people on hackers had pivoted and that's more or less what we were trying to show with this you know we, we see this looks the same as another marketplace so here they are comparing themselves against xdedic which is dedicated access to servers mm -hmm. uh, for as low as three dollars and fifty cents for each remote desktop server but diving into their actual marketplace we could see that they go on to say look we not only are just as good as xdedic you know, over 70,000 plus cheap and clean remote desktop servers. You know, you could get there for 50 cents, no BS, right? And here it is back again with new branding. So they're even celebrating like, not only was this just as good, we're giving you access to this once in a lifetime opportunity to get free access to the uh, services, right? The biggest hacked RDP database, max mine fraud score checker. So they're providing all this like validation Absolutely. for shady things, which is insane to think that we've got to this level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, you know, the, the complexity and, and the customization that goes into some of these, these, uh, these exploits and, and these packages are, are just, you know, unreal. Um, you know, the, you know, kind of maybe touch on a little bit later, but you know, some of the, uh, some of the exploit kits that uh, will, will download a, a payload, the number of tools and tricks, tactics they use to avoid detection on the user machine are, that's another area that just becomes, you know, really, really fascinating to uh, the study. But uh, yeah, this is, as I said, this is a, an entirely new market, right? And it's, it's an entirely new world and it's very organized, very structured. And, you know, this sounds like a good deal actually. Yeah, well, why not? Uh, you and I have often talked about go to market on pricing, which you know our partners have to deal with this every day. How are they going to go to market? How are they going to bring their offerings to even uh, you know the competitive MSPs in their area? Um, what's funny is some of the ways that you go to market, right? Is how are you going to offer your contracts? So you see right away this is one of those ransomware as a service. And for anybody who hasn't heard of these before, you know, just like you buy software as a service or you know, on-demand finance as a service or infrastructure as a service, of course, RAS or ransomware as a service is now a thing as well. Um, and they're promising, you know, we provide already configured, compiled, fully undetectable ransomware and decryptors. And we're the only one that provides a free anon anonymous command and control dashboard. So you see their own differentiators. But what I really find interesting is when they get into their sales and marketing. So you see here, they're already talking about package number one for 900 bucks. But it's really funny if you start comparing these, they want to make it so you can actually take a look and say, you know, if you go all in on me for a 12 month deal, nobody likes one year contracts. But the reality is, you know, if you can only afford six months or month by month, we'll provide you options. And what's neat about this, keep in mind, we're talking about uh, Ranyan here, which is the ransomware as a service. What's funny is they started out with these big blocks of text. And I don't know about you, Kevin, but if my marketing team came to me and was like, we're gonna sell products and we're gonna give somebody just a giant list of, of, of features, right? Nobody wants to see that. We wanna understand value. We wanna understand what's the pricing. We wanna see the comparables. So the team behind Ranyan actually packaged it together and they realized that, oh, some people like pay as you go on a month by month basis. We're gonna charge them a little bit extra for it, but we're also gonna simplify our subscription for you so you could see the value of Real-time client manager. Nope, you don't get that with pay-as-you-go. 
but if you actually want to buy six months, we'll throw it in for you. Um, have you guys in your own research, uh, Kevin, seen very similar things like this or nonsense uh, where, where people are trying to compete on pricing, not just on features? Yeah, they're doing, yeah, they're, they're doing it all day long, particularly in this space because this is a very, this is a, a, a emerging and very now competitive space, the, the, the as a service, right? So, and it, it, this stuff starts out in the commercial space and they're like, hmm, these enter enterprising individuals say, hell, I can run this as a service. Uh, and so, yeah, you're seeing you know, forums competing with each other, you know, and, and one upping on, you know, their, their tactics. That was interesting about this group is that uh, I think back in the first slide, they said very, you know, very uh, upstanding of them or, or very ethical of them. They don't take fees from your clients or their clients, right? They're just, they're just taking transaction fees when you buy the packages, not, you know, at the, the time of, uh, you know, exploit of the, uh, the unfortunate user. So, um, you have some that will will uh, will go both ways and try to extract value out of uh, both ends of the equation. But uh, yeah, again, this is um, yeah, it, these markets have matured and they are now competitive, and so you have to do something to stand out. And packaging and pricing is obviously one way you do that. Oh gosh, yeah, you know, so so you have the you know a la carte uh, examples of pricing, but of course, part of marketing is not only what you're doing, but what you can promise, right? So I'm throwing my next gen glasses on now because we saw the ghostly shop emerge and they didn't want to compete on price. They're not about their budget, right? They understand its value and they're, they, they want to provide you the best and brightest. So what I found was great is not only do we have to deal with the, uh, the marketing hype within cybersecurity sales that notice it's made its way into their markets as well. The next generation of ransomware is here. You can now buy next gen ransomware. And I kind of felt that you had to go like 10 years, right? We had antivirus and 10 years later, we got next gen antivirus. Right. But I guess on the dark web, things are just, you know, that much faster. Moves fast. And, you know, and this, you know, you're able to dashboard, you know, <laughs> when, when you're able to dashboard your, uh, your, your statistics, your, your success criteria, you know, you know you're, you're working with a very well uh, structured and organized uh, enterprise behind the scenes. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, the rate of, of speed in which uh, they're adopting commercial tactics is, is pretty fascinating. Yeah, so I get what Kevin called out, right? Think about it. our businesses depend on, you know, KPIs, right? Or key performance indicators that we need to keep track of what's going on. And somebody in chat mentioned, right, you know, does it require or does it have machine learning and AI? I'm pretty sure that means next, next gen. That's coming next. <laughs> but what Kevin was mentioning here with those statistics and KPIs, think about this. They actually are providing dashboards of like, how's your ROI on your income? Oh, today's not a good day. We're hitting that COVID-19 slump, man. Not, a, mm -hmm. you know, not as many people opening up emails now that they're home. Uh, when reality is, we all know that it's the exact opposite. They're opening up even more. Yeah. Um, but even to infected computers, you can actually see the migration away from Windows XP and Windows Vista. But you see very few of those. More Windows 7 machines and a whole boatload of Windows 10 as well as an events-based activity. So-and-so has paid the ransom. So-and-so has been infected. Like, this is where we're at, right? Um, you know, and uh, I, I, it just blow, blows me away. That's a SaaS business dream, right? Go to bed at night and you wake up in the morning and you see, you know, all the transactions and so-and-so has paid the ransom, so-and-so has been affected, so-and-so has paid the ransom. And that's just, it's just, it's ridiculous. You know, it's funny. People are calling out like, oh, I don't see anything in here about Mac OS. Right. This is a great example of the economy. We all know Mac OS is just as vulnerable as Windows. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that makes, you know, when I'm talking about the, the actual server, or sorry, not servers, but laptops operating system, right? you know, instead of iOS, where there isn't the same walled garden. What's funny is there's just still way more Windows computers. So you even see like us as a company at Hunters had to decide how we were going to support Macs. And we mm -hmm. said, you know what, there's one to 2% of computers that have Macs out there. I don't know if ID Agent has been in a similar uh, scenario where you've ever had to prioritize one feature more than another, but Kevin, to me, this highlights what the audience showed out is like, look, they clearly had to prioritize and say one of these was more important. Look, they're not even supporting Mac OS yet. Right. Yeah, they're definitely not a Mac shop. Yeah. Um, but Kevin, you and I wanted to take this to another level though, right? There was the examples of, you know, what does the marketplaces look like? But you and I wanted to make this a little bit more personal. We wanted to show how they're actively targeting people and take it a step further. And one of the things that excited me, this is that older slide we had, right? This is the one that was talking about, I'm going to make a custom fake domain and I'm going to, you know, 
Uh, with that, I'll set you up your own fake domain, your own website, and I'll spoof or you know, impersonate any website you want me to. I'll even try to steal cookies. I know that the ID agent team has been sharing this for you know, months or maybe even a year plus that you've been showing this, like what does you know, phishing web pages look like and why do you need education? Do you wanna talk through a little bit about this slide, which is comparing you know, the legit eBay and maybe the not so legit eBay? Yeah, you know, it's uh, kind of, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you get those ads where you want to circle the differences or, you know, those, those little you know, pictures inside of the ma newspapers or magazines, whatever. But, you know, this is, uh, you know, you think eBay, really, people are still falling for eBay. I mean, how long has this been going on and PayPal? But, you know, these still happen, you know, at a tremendous rate. You know, now you're shifting toward the Amazons and, there's still a, a, a ton uh, around uh, Facebook, but you know this is a perfect example, right? You know, for us to recreate this here's a Facebook you know example, right? You know, to create this, to scrape that site and and you know create a URL, URL to redirect or some type of executable, you know, behind the scenes on the image, you know, that's that's a that's a five minute project, right? And that's something that can be done, you know, quickly, right? You put an enterprise behind the scene, you put, you know, uh, effort, you put uh, revenue behind the scene, you know, you'd be surprising, you know, how, how uh, effective and how real life, you know, these things can look. And so, so that was one of the things, right? We would always get the question, are you showing uh, us how bad it is by showing us the credentials, the email addresses, the passwords, and some of the other PII, you know, what's next? How do we start to prevent it? And that's why we kind of went down that uh, security awareness training path because, you know, for most of the folks on the on this uh, you know this Zoom this call, you know they get it right. They understand the hover over links. They understand you know when when they're receiving something that uh, they're not expecting. They they use caution, diligence, all that stuff. But you know that you overlay the broader population, you know, and especially the the uh, the, uh, the older broader population, the the rate of uh, you know successful uh, attack is is through the roof right and especially right now with all this COVID stuff and everybody working from home all having all this time on their hands it, it's a it's a I don't know you think after all these years and hearing about it and all the news and the, you know the media that people would start to understand it but it's just as bad as it was two three five ten years ago with the volume of exploits and people actually falling for these things so uh, some of our comments are reiterating exactly what you're saying, Kevin. What's funny about it is people are talking about how quick it is to make these phishing pages. Some people are saying, look, it's a five minute project. I'm calling out, there's a tool called the to uh, Social Engineering Toolkit mm -hmm. or uh, SET is what it's referred to that's available for free. And what's cool about these is by people using, for instance, Kevin mentioned Passly, obviously the benefits of being able to add two factor and things of that nature. What's amazing is for our organizations, that are actually outrunning the bear, right? You don't always have to be the fastest person, but you just need to, or you just need to be the one, you know, to outrun the slowest person when it comes to beating the bear. What's beautiful here is the hackers are seeing they're actually getting challenged. So take a look at this. This actual page. This is another one of those Russian forums, and you know, clearly broken here. But you see, somebody has the intent. I need, you know, Office 365 or Hotmail clean scam page. It needs to be able to gather the results of those passwords in text and send them to me via Telegram or Jabber. So imagine what this is gonna work, right? This is gonna be the platform that a hacker is gonna use. They're gonna get you to go to a fake O365 page or your customers more likely. They're gonna get them to fall for it. Then they're gonna gather the results in some sort of app like Jabber or Telegram, it's encrypted, and they can write a program that as soon as they get your credentials, immediately leverage that automation to do malicious things for it. But notice what Kevin called is, you know, for instance, our people that are taking the next level this is all it takes to be able to get past that. And then you have somebody following up down here saying, oh man, not only do I need that, I need one that's undetected for Office 365 and something that handles the two-factor authentication. So you actually see here somebody trying to level up and go for those harder targets. So that's a great example where you have somebody here at the lower level saying, I just need a basic scam page and somebody that's considering two-factor. So this is an example that we've shown before on previous webinars, but it was perfect. This was an actual MSP that was in Maryland as well. And this MSP uh, came and said, we want to educate the entire market that somebody was trying to scam us with a fake O365 login page. They added their URL for the MSP. This was the team at MS Group that shared this with the community. And then they highlighted, look here at windows.net. This is a legitimate 
Azure website that they're hosting this off of. This is a Microsoft website. They just happen to be using this scam page to, to lure you in. And ideally here, if you're not using two-factor or you know, they're preparing to, to spoof your Azure you know, uh, authentication, this is a great example of how somebody using a secondary form of two-factor can actually add you a little bit of security and maybe even a little bit of security where, you know, if I was logging in since I use Duo on my end and you could use Duo, you could use Passly, you could use whatever you need to. If I'm seeing Azure propping up for authentication and I'm supposed to be using Passly, that's a good indicator that some hacker is doing something afoot. So anyways, great to see there. Um, another one of these examples Kevin and I wanted to make sure is this is one of those that I just took this screenshot literally yesterday. You could see this is their original post, but it's been updated every single day for the last you know, year and change. And this is hacker on the dark web selling access to what they call the raccoon stealer. So I've done the full translation here from Russian to English. And notice they call out, we're gonna steal your password, we're gonna steal your cookies, we're gonna gather your browser applications like Firefox, you name it, they support Firefox, Chrome, Edge, Internet Explorer, you name it. And this is kind of what the tools that people use to build those databases that you know the original ID agent dark web ID go out and look for. So this is the type of tools that's going to steal your information real quick and smash and grab. Yeah, very, very common. I, I, I actually like uh, through your translation. I like the little tagline. Was it "We steal, you deal"? Or yeah, that's a that's a pretty good uh, look. That's some good marketing. What's funny is this actually had an animated GIF as well. The raccoon would rummage through some stuff and then eventually steal. So they're up in their game with their own logo. Kevin, was it you and I that BS that every uh, every hacker group nowadays, every cyber criminal has got to have their own logo and their own exploit name and everything else? Every variant, every strain has its own little iconography now, and uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, they've got their own Twitter Twitter handles for you know, whatever malware or variant. Yeah, look, out there. Like the yeah. Raccoon Stealer team. I, I I dig. They've got good branding, right? Uh, yeah, from what yeah. they're doing. What I found was really funny here was it's always creative. Not only are what are people selling. But notice, Kevin, when he challenged me to come together with this, you know, unveiling cybercrime uh, webinar, he said, let's show people how this stuff, not only what we're seeing on the dark web, let's show people how it's being actually scammed against them. So I don't know if anybody heard about it, but a, about a month ago, right, we're, we're just short of a month ago, the U.S. government came out on the Health and Human Services website, and they had a redirection bug that allowed hackers to abuse these fake coronavirus emails and fake uh, coronavirus phishing attempts to lure people into installing malware. And it turned out it was the raccoon info stealer, right? And so I wanted to take a step back since a lot of people on our audience are technical and they wanna see how this stuff is going. I wanted to share a little bit of how this was working. So this is the article from Bleeping Computer, but this is the actual phishing email. So it came in and notice it's calling, you know, it's spoofing somebody called Let's Achieve Health right? People giving education out there about what should I do if I have coronavirus symptoms. So they're playing on the fear that people like are looking for information. And you could imagine if I was taught in my training, you should always hover over the URL to see where it's going to. I would have saw this. It's taken me to dsys.hhs.gov. I mean, Kevin, you know, this is pretty legitimate, right? You want to, you want your users to check the domain. Yeah, this is well played. I mean, this is uh, this is an exploit on, on multiple fronts, right? It's looking for a vulnerability in the in the target URL, the target platform, and then it's and it's and it's playing on people's fears. And, and you know, this was uh, this is very sophisticated, very very well crafted uh, exploit. And you know, you're seeing that across uh, multiple .gov sites you know, within multiple cases, you know, beyond just HHS. Uh, and then, you know, it's, you, you, this is going to, this type of exploit is going to be pretty pervasive for the next year, you know, the health related. And then you think about the stimulus, think about the, uh, the checks that are being delivered and, and um, you know, the, the volumes of, of potential exploits that are financially motivated and playing on people's fears. And so this is very well crafted. And to your point, right, somebody hovers over this and sees, oh, it's going to a .gov. You know, you're 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 assuming you're going to the right place, right? Uh, and uh, this is this is very well played. Yeah, I was really impressed of when you layer. Think about it; they layered good, timely social engineering, in addition to it with this domain. 
And yeah, you're not taught to look at the whole URL, right? Or look a little bit more into there. Mm -hmm. You know, this redirection. So in case anybody isn't familiar with what a open relay or how it works, uh, we put this together for you. So imagine you're here at your trusted website, hhs.gov, and you were hosting some other web page that had information. You often want your redirect to redirect you to that desired location. It's a basic feature. Probably most of you MSPs that are using web page, uh, WordPress for your web page, it has this feature. So in case you ever move a URL, it redirects the user there. Um, and so with that said, um, I wanted to give you a heads up that if you're redirecting, usually you want it to redirect to trusted websites. So hhs.gov might go to cdc.gov, right? You could think of how that would be trusted, but in an open redirect vulnerability, this redirector can allow them to specify any URL and take them to that malicious destination. So take a look, this is an example in somebody's browser. This happened to be uh, Firefox in this case, but it could have been anything. And you see what that URL looks like. It looks like you're going to hhs.gov. But you can see what it did is it triggered the downloading of this document.zip file. So you know where this is going. You download, your user inevitably opens document.zip. Does anybody see what's inside the document.zip? Coronavirus.doc. And for those folks that are system admins right on this call, file name extensions is enabled here. But notice here, this says it's a shortcut. And shortcuts usually have an L and K. I, I love the, the, the people in chat saying, quick, double click it. We know what the end user is gonna do. So take a look at this Windows feature these hackers are abusing, that when you uh, take a look in Explorer, it hides that this is actually dot doc dot L and K. And when you view this in Windows 10 or any Windows operating system, this is what your file looks like. Coronavirus dot doc. Notice the little shortcut error here. And when you were to double click this, if you were to fall for this phishing here, you would get this error. Microsoft Word, even though this is a rich text file, says error, file is broken. You know, I don't know about you, Kevin, but I think you and I have seen it more, more than once that the user immediately, what do they do? They like forward this shortcut or forward this file to everybody else in HR saying, I'm trying to view this or mm -hmm. IT, will you open this knowing that they're going to help spread the, you know, the infection. Exactly. Yep. And so somebody in chat just said, are you saying HHS.gov had a redirect vulnerability and someone took advantage of it? Uh, Cathal, that's exactly what happened. So the webpage dcis.hhs.gov was down as of last week. If you're interested, you could take a peek and see if the web page is still down, but it, it definitely had a vulnerability there. So going through, if anybody's interested, I'll save you the, all the you know, technical mumbo jumbo of what's going on under the hood. But what happened is this shortcut stored a copy of some malicious VBS. And if you see here, we highlighted, what it did is it went and said, download another file off another IP called corona.exe, store it into the temp directory as this randomly named file, and then pop up a fake error message saying file is broken. So under the hood, once again, you were getting hit with raccoon malware stealers. So that's a great example of this information stealer. And you can actually see in this article here, this is all the Russian used in this example here of what it used to say, software front and back end. We saw from our example beforehand, this is that same, say warning you that, oh, we've created all these usable features for you and the software front and back end and all these features that we're providing to you provides you an opportunity. So anyways, it's always neat to see this full circle of right. where we're going. And you think about again, the complexity behind this type of attack, right? Um, You've got up front, you've got playing on people's emotions. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, tricking somebody in, in, you know, with a URL redirect. You've got, you know, essentially faking them out, right, by having that pop up, you know, show up and say, hey, this just, it's not working. Meantime, you've got executables or, you know, programs being downloaded in the back end. You've got some that are, are even more sophisticated that know that, you know, somebody's on to them, they're going to go at first thing they'll do is look at task manager and, and see if there's something, you know, inadvertently running. And these guys have triggers built into these executables to, you know, disable their being detected on task manager, right? Just kind of basic stuff, but the layers of um, uh, sophistication that they build in, the layers of deception is, is really, you know, that's where, again, this market's maturing, the tactics, the marketing side of it, but on the back end, the, the sophistication of the, the, the attacks 
are becoming that much more sophisticated, which is, is that's probably one of the more fascinating things about this, how quickly that evolves and how quickly they can, they can pivot on their tactics to avoid detection. Yeah, I, do you notice here that Charlie in her article, she actually wrote, Raccoon might not be the cheapest option, but it literally supports over 60 applications to steal data from. Um, you know, a lot of us forget like, right, in the MSP world, we're still in sales, right? We're still educating. And so one of the things when Kevin and I were talking about, like, how do we end this uh, a little bit of, you know, what we're seeing, we're obviously going to open up for question and answers here in a little bit. But think about the things that we just saw. And I'm going to go ahead and, and do a little bit. Kevin, do you mind if I do a little bit of ID agents pitch in my mind as from me of what I've seen? Yeah, please, please. So, so think about it. The dark web ID, um, well, you know, I'm going to work this backwards. Pastly, right? One, we see phishing is hot. Everybody in chat is literally saying social engineering is the guaranteed way to get in, and they're correct. Works every time for pen tests, they're absolutely right. I can tell you there's nothing that will cause me more headache than a good old fashioned two factor authentication. You make me work much harder, right? Mm -hmm. So, having password management, not reusing the same password on every website, the easiest answer why you need something like Passly. Going backwards, just because the passwords are there, keep in mind, somebody still is doing that phishing. And you've seen in the forums, they're literally talking to each other. I want to try to steal their cookies. So if I do get their password, remember that button that you use to sign into web pages that say, remember me for 30 days? That often creates you a token or a cookie that the attacker, like, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Mitnick's done this in some of his demos, but it captures that token. And that allows somebody to be able to bypass two-factor for a very short period of time, two weeks or a month. And so that's why you still need this security awareness training and phishing training, because these emails are getting really sophisticated, right? They're playing on people's fear. They're timely on this end. And with that said, when somebody eventually gets like raccoon, you know, information stealer or some sort of persistent malware in your network, you're gonna need somebody looking on the dark web there for your data, looking for that business email compromise, looking for the credentials that are there on the internet. This is why your partners still need that la layered security. And so I know I'm not here to pitch ID agent, but I think there's no easier way for me to show like this is real life. This is why Huntress is choosing to partner with ID agent in this because this is quite literally what you're looking for, right? This is actionable. This is a real solution with that said. So Kevin, I know I stole some of your thunder there, but hopefully that was useful on, on to, you know, to have me as somebody who does the shady to be able to vouch like these really are solutions that are solving real problems. Yeah, if this whole CEO thing doesn't work out, we should talk. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, yeah. no, just kidding. No, but hey, look, I mean, again, we're not trying to you know, make a blatant pitch, but you know, we always, you know, in some respects, we kind of built it backwards, you know, our, our, our platform backwards. But um, the point early on with dark web was just to break it down like we're doing right, right now, right? You know, oftentimes, especially in the MSP space, you, you, you have a hard time translating the cyber challenges and risks to your customers in a way that they don't perceive security as a, an expense, right? It's something that they have to do where there's an ROI attached to it. So that's why we started out in the, the, the credential side of things. You have to show them that this stuff is out there, right? Uh, and then we started working backward. You, you have to start changing people's behavior and you have to start testing them. That's the, the bullfish platform. And then so now it's about, uh, you know, the multi-factoring into applications, into machines, you know, uh, eliminating passwords where you can through a single sign-on. Uh, and then when you actually have to use passwords, you have to have some type of password vault, password management. And so, you know, this is, this is kind of how we, we decided to pursue kind of the security uh, challenge, right? Make it very, um, you know, tangible, make it very in your face by showing them, hey, this is just your password and, you know, you get the oh crap reaction and then you can start changing behavior and then, you know, starting to, you know, better secure them. And you guys take it to a whole nother level with the, you know, predictive and, and, and detection. And so that's, that's why it's a very great compliment to what we do and what you guys do. Yeah, I had to put my cyber visor on here to get extra nerdy, right, when, I, when I'm talking. But, uh, you know, just like Kevin's situation, we built our product backwards, right? There's nothing better than saying hackers sometimes slip by. For those of our partners that aren't already Huntress members of the community, Huntress is super simple. It delivers you a simple, hey, here's a high level when somebody slips by your network of how they maintain that foothold. They're going to tell you exactly how to remediate it. And the most beautiful part of this whole thing is since we know hackers are going to get in, right? How do we just say, let's make this a commodity? So we deliver you a remediation plan, you click a button, it remediates it for you, is the whole high level. 
that's it. That, that's, that's really it on this side. And I know everybody has been hitting us up on chat, Kevin, like crazy saying, can you tell me like how fresh is the data you're using this? How fresh is this dark web information? I can tell you some of the slides, majority of the slides that I just shared were, were gathered in the last, you know, uh, 48 hours for some of the, the ones that were there. Nothing in here is more than a week, uh, sorry, no, more than a month old. And with that said, this is one of those things that's just a no brainer. Um, I know everybody else, Kevin, has been asking the question about free resources. Where do I get them? I know this is one plug I have for you all, which is you have a boatload. You guys are huge on your powered services and being able to give people branded, awesome looking content. Do you have anything there for people that are asking that question? Yeah, look, so, so you know, you mentioned uh, powered services. So one of the, I think the, the, the smarter things we, we did a couple of years ago is bring on a, a, a very robust, capable group of uh, former uh, MSP CEOs and operators uh, to help us really, you know, build the, the content materials to help help the, the community, right? And so we have a, a very engaged, very robust um, uh, powered services team that, that helps trains our partners and just goes to the nines and make sure they're successful. But for the ones, uh, organizations that aren't yet partners of ours or they're looking for a resource, just on our, our site, we try to give out as much information as possible to keep everybody up to date on you know, you know, to your point, fresh data and what's going on. I do a weekly uh, series called the Week in Breach, where we try to highlight uh, the number of breaches or types of breaches globally that we see. Uh, so yeah, it's all about giving as much as you can to the community and making sure that they have the, the, the tools and resources, whether they're a partner of ours or not. And so, you know, we're all trying to do our part to bring, uh, you know, education and, and uh, better secure everybody. Yeah, yeah, huge, and obviously cut from the same cloth. Uh, one of the downfalls is when you put out so many darn resources, you, you start uh, having URLs all over the place. So for anybody that's like grabbing the screenshots, and we can throw these same URLs in the chat for anybody that's looking at them. Um, but where I'm going with it is, for those that are looking to educate your partners on like COVID-19 phishing emails and some of that stuff, we've already put together branded decks that you could go out and use. You don't have to be a Hunter's partner on, on these ones. They're just free community resources and assets videos that you could show your partners and some of this was some of the questions people asked was like Derek Watkins asked one question that says what is the most prized commodity in these marketplaces and what commodity trends are you seeing so Kevin you and I always try to be timely with our resources of what we're sharing um, we give out like you know I'll, I'll advance one more slide here we give out guides on how to sell cybersecurity, but I'm constantly seeing new creative ways to leverage your data um, for instance on ransomware we tend, and we tend to see a lot of these marketplaces being specialized and not only can you encrypt the data with that ransomware as a service, you could steal their data too. And if they are able to restore all this data from backup, you're actually able to go and say, oh, well, I've stolen your data too. If you refuse to pay the ransom, it's not just for the data that was encrypted. I'm now going to disclose this on the dark web and we're seeing this stuff so uh, on the daily. So I would say that's one of the new prized commodities is can I not only encrypt your data, can I steal it too to have a, you know, a one-two punch? Not only did I encrypt it, even if you restore from backup, I can hold you, uh, uh, I, I can hold you, you know, hostage. Are you seeing anything else of these trends or commodities or anything like that? No, I, I think you, you hit probably one of the, one of the hottest ones, right? I, I, I remember maybe three or four months ago, uh, there was a, it played out in real time, right? I'm bleeping computer. It was a guard services company out of the, the Philly area where um, I, I, they, you know, their site security and you know, security keywords all over the place. But I think the, the actual, uh, the, in, the antagonist in this case thought that they were a cybersecurity uh, organization. So I remember it might've been some lost in translation, but you saw this play out in real, life, real time in the computer where the organization was saying, I'm not paying the ransom, right? And then the, antagonists would go out there and say, all right, well, if you're not paying the ransom, I'm going to go out there and, and reveal all your deep, dark, dirty secrets, all your customer data, you know, financial information, you know, and this was, I mean, it was fascinating to watch. It was over a period of a couple of days as this thing played out, but, you know, I think you hit on the, on uh, kind of one of the number one, you know, exploits that we're seeing. One of the number one trends is that, you know, if you're not going to pay the ransom, I'm going to go to the nines to try to exploit you until you pay the ransom. And that's just, and that's one of those zero-sum games uh, that uh, unfortunately is starting to play out. So it's like, 
you know, do you pay it? Do you not pay it? Um, do you risk public embarrassment? Do you, you know, what, what do you do in that case? And then, you know, I think that the one interesting thing to think about, you know, moving forward is that you have a lot of these states like New York with their SHIELD Act, where it's prescriptive about security and what you should be doing. You know, and, and I think you're going to be seeing, you know, relating to the ransom, we're going to see a, a shift in really what is considered a breach, right? Is being, you know, ransomware or crypto lock, is that a breach? You know, in some circles, yeah. you say no, but. Yeah, it used to be no, they didn't steal any data. Now it's almost like the, uh, you have to assume, especially when a lot of these companies, uh, I mean, there was the major, right? There was, uh, Oh, gosh, I was just uh, pressed about it this morning. There was that major Fortune 500 tech provider. Is it Cognizant? I'll, I'll pull up so I'm not dropping the wrong name of, of a company that was just held by the, uh, the Maze ransomware team. Mm -hmm. um, that Yeah, it was Cognizant. That supposedly, you know, 250,000 employees servicing the Fortune 500 and ransomware got in there. It was the Maze actors and everybody knows they're used to not only do I hold your data hostage, but can I, you know, release it on the dark web? And one of the things we saw on the dark web yesterday was that case yeah. of, a, of a cloud service provider, MSP, being held that way. So, Kevin, I'm getting beat up on some of the chat, on some of the questions. Obviously, if anybody else has extra questions, but one of the, one of the things somebody asked is, like, they were asking me, uh, go back and forth about, like, hey, what does your product offer? You and I, you know that we're, we're here to educate. But I, I think I've got a slide for you guys. So let me screen share real quick um, for the people that are asking this so I don't get like hate messages for not sharing. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, with that said, here's the, um, the resources. If anybody hasn't taken a look, obviously I'm, I'm giving mad kudos here. Uh, I won't even increase it here for the size, but you know, ID Agent has a boatload of things. And Kevin, I'll let you do your, your pitch here. But you guys actually provide some like NFR capability, right, for Passly? We do, right? So uh, for new and existing partners, we'll provide uh, 10, you know, uh, NFR internal use licenses. And that allows you to multi-factor into dark web ID. Uh, but it also comes with the single sign-on and the password, you know, vault capability. So, so part of it is that we want to encourage this, 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 um, you know, this culture ecosystem of you know giving back to the uh, the, the community and, and upping every everybody's game right upping their protection but you know we wanted to do something where as we're launching this uh, we want to give them just ridiculous value just because of the you know you know the times and and uh, we feel like with this platform that we have between dark web and uh, the monitoring the full fish testing and training and now with multi-factor password management and single sign-on um, in some cases, we're, we're helping vendor or MSPs reduce their vendor account by three or four vendors because we have a completely, you know, integrated workflow, integrated platform. So, so yeah, so we, you we're, we're going, you know, pretty, you know, part of the market to show our commitment to helping them. And then obviously with all the power and services, uh, stuff that we provide, you know, helping them, you know, pitch and, and helping partners, you know, close business. Yeah, it's, uh channel and, and the whole world's been good to us so we want to kind of get back and this is one of the ways that we can do it no that's huge that's absolutely huge and on my end the closest thing i got is if you you know you're interested kick the tires huntress.io has a, a website or a free trial it's good for 21 days unlimited computers and the reason we do that at the end of the day is just to be able to uh, make it easily uh you know easy for our partners to be able to try before they buy um with that said so some of the questions that we've got, uh, Dana, I don't know if you're still on here, but some people were asking the questions of, um, I can think of a lot of our clients and a lot of my, uh, you know, a lot of people that I work with would benefit from seeing this and these uh, slides might resonate with them. I believe our intent is Zoom will send them a, a follow-up email and, uh, you know, with the recording, we'll obviously have some of the attachments and things like that that we could provide, uh, for example, slides of that nature. So. I wanted to reiterate that, and obviously, Dana or Andrew, uh, if you have anything to add, feel free to chime in. Yeah, we'll absolutely be sending out from ID Agent a, an email to everybody, um, reiterating you know, our special offer, offering the slides here, and some links to some of the resources that you talked about. Yep, and then just echoing that for Huntress as well. Cool, so um, uh, Kevin, I know some of these are always hard to get these on the fly questions, but Jeremy asked, out of curiosity, uh, you know, how many sites or sources is currently being scrubbed in the dark net for breach protection? I know that one's super hard because the, the marketplaces get, 
you know, stood up and tore down just as fast. Do you have any of those metrics? It would be hard for me to give it. So. Yeah. I mean, between, uh, between sites, between forms, between, uh, just some of the, uh, the scraping, you know, technologies and tools we use. I mean, on a daily basis, we're probably hitting up 100, 120,000 different you know, unique areas. Um, to your point, you could have a, a site that's up today and gone tomorrow, or it could have been mirrored, you know, four or five different times. And so it, it's, it's uh, how do you find that? So we're constantly trying to, to tweak and tune and, and uh, you know, pull, you know, from any source that we can, we can aggregate from. So it is is very much a moving target. I mean, it's just really a, a based on what what's up, what's available, where we can knock and actually handshake and get in at times. You know, some of these forms are not like, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, we're giving you API access to our uh, our form to you know pull our data out. Some of it takes a while to get uh, uh, acquainted and and uh, and let into. So. Yeah, it's often a hard, it's a hard question to answer just because it's such a moving target on a, on a daily basis, hourly basis, you know, for the most part. Yeah, I can tell you, I get kicked out of, uh, uh, I, I get kicked out of these forums. We, we managed to get that person uh, arrested not long ago or, you know, for uh, hacking that MSP mm -hmm. and uh, they kicked me out of that forum as well. So it's hard. It's super hard to keep up to date. Uh, but that was an awesome question for somebody. Ironically, one of the questions that somebody had is like, look, Zoom has been getting some really bad press. Why are we hosting this? A bunch of security experts are on a Zoom platform. Um, I can give the Huntress answer because more or less, it's a lot easier for me to give official answers on that stuff. And overall, I would tell you that for me, products have vulnerabilities all day, every day. And Zoom does not get a pass on my side of the house for having that many vulnerabilities. What's really impressive though, is how quick and the thing that only matters to me in 2020 is when you have a vulnerability, how do you respond? Do you respond transparently? Do you get the expertise of other people? Do you stand up a bug bounty? And most importantly, do you patch quickly? Mm -hmm. So um, just for the sake of you know that, that's what it takes to pass my litmus test. I can't think of another platform that won't also have the same you know bugs. Go to webinar, blue jeans, I see nothing on their teams that make them more qualified uh, you know, than, than the others. So we use it internally. This Zoom was branded Huntress, you know, dot Zoom dot whatever US. So uh, it's a risk assessment we've taken and said, look, it sucks. We've seen, you know, uh, I think it was the state of New York. Um, there was also SpaceX decided to remove Zoom, but on our side of the house, um, I think you personally have just as much concern as the other shady products that are not getting automatically updated in your networks than the products that just have been very lax. So risk-based assessment sucks, but everything's vulnerable in 2020. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I agree with you that their CEO that came out, I mean, he definitely fell on the sword for uh, lack of foresight and security and, and, uh, but you gotta, you also give them some, some pretty uh, major props. I mean, it, it, what they scale from 10 million users to 200 million users overnight or something like that. So that's pretty impressive. You're going to get, you're going to get issues that uh, come along the way, but um, yeah, there could have been a little bit more, you know, I don't know, forward looking about security but yeah but they they came out and they owned it and that's a lot of times you know that, that, that's it that's what you want to see because uh the ones that sweep things under the rugs like that are are the ones that you know um you stay away from yeah all right well i mean we're we got four minutes left there's questions that continue to 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 you know flow in one of them was can you please provide links in the chat to anything that you've referenced I just dumped the resources into chat for everybody that's following along. I'll follow up with uh, one of the ones was about hhs.gov. So I'm gonna follow that. Uh, Kevin, do you wanna take a look to see if we have any more? I think uh, we, we've made it pretty well through the chat. And if anybody else doesn't have any of those things, uh, you know, uh, we, we could wrap this thing up four minutes and give you four minutes to take that bathroom break before your next uh, whatever work from home scenario that you're dealing with. There you go, yeah. No, I, I think I'm good. Yeah, there's a ton of great ones. So uh, there you go. Someone says, scan your shirt uh, or stand up so I can scan your shirt. Little do you know, right? That's that I don't have pants on. So no, I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, so there's the QR code in case anybody else wanted to play. Um, but I'm good. Kevin, I can't thank you enough for like uh, coming through with this idea. I think it was a great one. Uh, obviously, huge fan uh, of what you guys are doing. And, and likewise for saying the kind words. Mm -hmm. um, We'll have to do this again next time that we uh, we've got new topics. Obviously, the dark web changes on the daily. Um, 
for everybody that's having a good time and enjoyed this type of content, let us know. Share it on your social media. Let us know in the feedback. Huge thanks for everybody that's saying you rock. We appreciate it. These things take a little bit of work to put a presentation together, uh, but we'll follow up quickly with all these URLs, videos, links, you name it, so you have a copy to educate your own clients. Yeah, that's, you know, I have to, next time I have to up my game with backgrounds and, uh, and mustaches. And oh, somebody asked that question too. Um, Zoom allows you to change your background if you use Zoom. So for all those vulnerabilities, technically, the one benefit you can get is a fancy green screen like this one. Mm -hmm. um, the other one I was using was Snap Camera. So, you know, if I want to look really cybery here, uh -huh. you, know, you can go the full thing with uh, Snap Camera. That's the Snapchat app. So crazy fun way to end. Um, thank you, everybody, for the great time and look forward to our very next session. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.